Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, a.k.a. the Black Alpha, and across from me is my Omega. It's uh, Captain Philip Ressisher. Good evening. Hey, body buddy. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I never I never know what to expect when I say hi. I'm, I'm thrilled almost every time. Almost every time. Yeah. Um, I, got, I just got done um, yesterday. I used some of the uh, soap. The grenades that we got from the soap man. Oh, Jeff. Jeb, Jeb Simpson. Yeah, and I Jeb Simpson. Now he he said it was a more of a grenade, didn't he? Right, but I I don't I you know I know Trump's listening, and I don't want to say anything. There wrong, are keywords. Like Kathy Griffin. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that picture? Yeah, I saw the picture. I can't look at that. I, I didn't I didn't look at it, but it was a severed head of Donald Trump, right? Yeah, but I thought her face looked worse. <laughs> she has done some work. She um with her without makeup is truly terrifying. Mm. I believe. Well, just her age. She's. She's past her... She's getting up there. Yeah. I don't know if she ever had a prime. You know, and I have to make a formal apology to the world. Yeah. Um, not too long ago, I made a reference about how Sarah Silverman was, you know, looking, bagging down the dumps. Then you get a good look at Kathy Griffin. Holy jeez. But, and then I watched the Sarah Silverman special, and you know what? She looks great. The, the makeup's it's fit, holding up. all fit right. The bare minerals. Hmm. Uh, how did you like it? What? The special. Um, a speck of dust, right? Yeah, I saw it. It was good. I yeah. liked it. Yeah, it was, I, I, I laughed a couple times. Typical abortion humor out yep. of Sarah Silverman. Yep, can't you can't you can't get past it. <laughs> you can't have a Sarah Silverman special without a little abortion humor, right? Exactly. Oh man, I aborted over the weekend uh, the area, and I went up to uh, Chicago Land. I was so nervous. No, no, no. I wasn't pregnant, and if I did, I would I would keep it, and I nice. would name it Blake Junior. Oh, even though there, I am not Blake Senior. <laughs> It's, it's probably mine anyway. <laughs> we have a lot of finger pointing. <laughs> um, I went up to Chicago for a wedding. Did you guys take the plane up or did you drive? I, I, I could not take the plane up. Okay. I've, I've got some warrants in Chicago, and, and they, that's very they're very thorough in like Chicago land when you take to the air. Yeah, it's not like FCF Network, you know, airport where we can just come and go as we please and nobody pays attention. Oh yeah, it's the it's it literally is the wild west of, of airplanes right. over at FCF Network. Um, no, I went up there and actually, and it wasn't even a wedding; it was like a reception. Uh, my buddy got married to a Chinaman lady. Mm, nice, and, uh, right, good on him. He he's, he does so often that we we tell him on these web dating websites he would go to that he would filter by Asian. So that was his. I don't know if it's a thing you can do, but he oh, definitely you can do it. Did. Can you? You can do it. Filter by Asian. I've done that. Whew. Um, anyway, so he, he's marrying this lady. And we're up there, and we're like, you know what? Reception's over at 6. Let's go out and explore the city. Right. So what did we do? We, we're Googling. What's happening? Oh, yeah, What's Googling. Happening? It's the best. You know, I tried to Bing once. Oh. Never again. I'll tell you what. I Never be- forget. Yeah. No, I Binged once, and I it took me forever to get it cleaned up. Yeah. So I'm like, not, not that anymore. I'm Googling for the rest no of my thanks. life. No thanks. No uh, thanks. I, I, we Googled don't even, it. Don't even ask Jeeves. No, he, no, no, no. He takes forever. Lycos, kick him to the curb. Who? Lycos, remember that dog? Go get it, Lycos. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I'm, we're, uh, we're Googling, and we say, so you know what's happening? Naked bike riding. Ooh. So there, there's uh, about a mile or two where you can get completely naked and ride your bike during the stretch of the city. Nice. So you got all naked and went and rode your bike. No. No. You want to draw your attention to yourself another way? <laughs> you want those warrants to come to fruition? That's true. I'll pass. This is what we did. We go out to eat, and we see all these bikers riding around. They're not naked yet. But they're on their way there. They're on their way to the naked promised land. <laughs> so we like, you know what? After we eat, let's go see these people that we just saw, but now without clothes. And that's exactly what we did. We go to Michigan Avenue, right? Uh-huh. And we cross over the river there, and we hang out, and uh, at 9 p.m. rolls around. And I'm not joking, 2,000 naked people ride down the street. And, I, and I, so the people I was with decided to take some video. Um, I guess the question I would have, first and foremost... Yeah. Uh, what kind of permits do you need for that? You have to have some kind of permits, right? I, th- I think people got more permanents uh, in their hair, like in the okay. 80s. It was right. A That's lot true. of curlers back then. Sure. Uh, very, I mean, there was. A, it, some could argue that people had curlers in their pubes because they were so curly. Right. Was I mean, was there any anything good looking? 
Oh is yeah, there, yeah. Is there a few? There's some attractive. It. You have to be so comfortable with your the human form to have your nuts jostle about on the uh, on a bicycle. Yeah, and then I mean, this, no one's riding around with mega t- megaton hard-ons. Huh. These these are people with you know completely flaccid and in some case uh, em- remerging. Or demerging into sure. the body? I don't know if that's that can't be the way right. to say it. I was I was asking more about the ladies more so described than the guys. Oh, I was pretty I was penile fixated for okay. the most part. That's but cool. There's some great 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 American boobs out there for sure. Two thousand in the flesh. Wow. And I, I said, Why why are they doing this? Did you ask any of them? Um, no, but a lot of them, because I was riding the curb, a lot of people put their hands out for uh, fives. Some people were touching them. I didn't touch them. <laughs> I don't know where that's been. You were not about to high five that shit. No. What kind Only of- with me. <laughs> Um, you know what? Let's high five it right now. <laughs> nice. So we find out they're out there for a cause. Oh well, that's good. <laughs> not just a bunch of no, not, not just yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, they they did. Uh, the city allowed it to take place, and they did it because they wanted to say, "Hey, let's drop the oil consumption in America and start riding bikes." Okay. Oh, okay. To me, it's just a reason to get naked in the right. city, which is a great. Yeah, who, sure. When, when can you ever do that? Right. When can there, you ever really do there that? There were there were people that were sitting around a table. You know, they're, they're very concerned with oil consumption. They're like, how can we make a statement? Let's ride our bicycles. Great. And there's just that one drunk guy in the corner, like me or you. Let's get it naked. Let's do it with no clothes on. <laughs> and somehow, enough people raise their hand. I guess. If that's if that's how we could attract the youth, by we, stripping down. We could all just wear pink t-shirts with, like, an oil drum on them. And then, yeah, and then, like, a big red circle with a cross that right. was slashed like on the middle. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Oil busters. <laughs> it's a something naked in your neighborhood. Mm. Riding its bike. Oil buster. <laughs> well, thank you, city of Chicago, for, for letting that happen and letting letting the, their, that... Let this, us soak it in. Yeah. Right? Let, let us see the bare naked flesh. It's man. That's not the end of the story, though. Oh. I'm seeing this, and I'm thinking... What a great cause. What a great thing to do in the buff. So I say this to all of our frequent flyers. I make a solemn pledge to you that Captain Philip Bressisher and I will travel from coast to coast, bare naked. And we, uh, we want you, we want you to pledge to us that you'll do the same for a very special cause. It sounds great. Yeah. Coast to coast. We'll, we'll take a flight naked. Mm-hmm. What, what's the cause? Um, the cause is... Animal health, specifically the health of toads. Mm, that's a very, very... Toad awareness. Toad awareness. I like it. Hashtag, if you're on board... Yeah. Get that plan? Right. If you're on board with us, listener, hashtag, I'm all for toad awareness. It, it really hit me at a good time because um, I had two toads. One of them passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. It was Toady. You know, we, we, and he was originally named Wet Sprocket, and the, and the other one was is Harriet Toadman, nice because she tunnels everywhere. But uh, one, one of my, one of my, uh, and she wears an engineer's hat. Does she? That's how did you find one that fit her? She came with it. I think she had made it. And uh, but yeah, one of my toads is, is dead. R.I.P. And so I said, you know what? I'm up in this great uh, the uh, the city that never sleeps, Chicago. Right. And we see all these naked people, and I get think their penises kind of look like toads too. So I, I so let's put these let's put two and two together, right? Let's let's get naked for a cause, but a cause that hits close to me. Toad awareness. Toad awareness. So love it. I I that's what I want to do. That's what I want to tell our frequent flyers is you want some frequent flyer points? We're gonna hit that multiplier button. Boom! Twice as many as you would normally get for hashtagging toad awareness. And then maybe you know strip down and send us some pictures. Let's t- send that to. Uh, well, because we have to know you did it. We oh. can't just take your word for it. I, you're right. When was I sounded like a pervert just saying that. You're absolutely no, right. No, it's, it's, strictly, it's strictly for documentation purposes because the government will give us a tax break right. on the plane fuel yeah. if we show this for a good cause. Well, just two guys in, naked in a plane is not... No, you know, they're yeah. not, chalk that up to uh, you know tax fraud. Yeah. So, or tax, tax fraud. Frog. <laughs> <laughs> I was right there with you. Some people say we might spend too much time together. Uh, who, who would ever say that? I don't know. Uh, someone would say fan feedback. That's what I would say. You want some fan feedback? Uh, if you got, you know what? Don't you want to hear what I'm doing? 
You got something going on too? Let's hear it. Well, it, it really ties in with the biking, bicycle. Oh, okay. perfect. Yeah, let's, what's going on in your world? So I took a hiatus as well this weekend, and I went to good old St. Louis, Missouri. The city that never sleeps. Oh, it never sleeps. Um, we went to St. Charles, which... Um, there's a casino there, right? Oh, yeah, there's a couple casinos, but we went to St. Charles. That was a work trip. Uh, work paid for two nights stay in the Embassy Suites, really, which is a Hilton. Yep, uh, not not part of your for, formally formerly my former employer. I was going to text you and say, "What the hell is with this password? I can't figure it out." Um, but uh, we went down there and we were down on historic St. Charles. Ah, oh. you've been down there before? No, cobblestones, no. all the original buildings. I, uh, you've been there before. Mm-hmm. I've heard you talk about it. Right. Um, well, there's uh. In that area, there is a big bike trail, like a, a, a nationally known bike trail, the hmm. Kate or something. The bike trail that never sleeps. And so uh, you, all you see is bicyclists down there. Any in the nude? No, they weren't in the ah. nude. Um, but there's a lot of bike. There's a bike store. There's a, a restaurant that's called the Bike Stop Cafe. Any bisexuals or bike sexuals? I think there was a couple bike sexuals. Yeah. And then we went to a brewery. And we were sitting there at and looking at the tap handles, and they had cycles on them too. What was the name of the brewery? Tailhead, tailheads. Now is shit. that tailhead shit? Is no. that is that the um, is that anything it's, to do with a bicycle at all? Do they name it after bikes or the no? Trail but I or? think they're just they're smack dab right there. So they're um, kind of drafting off that, trying to get some of that sweet bike. You see any drunk bicy- bicyclists? No. Uh, tailhead Brewing Company. Okay. Um, shout out to them. And they even like in their merch, they have a cycling shirt. Yeah, why not take take full advantage, right? Right, because that's, I mean, that's where everybody you know, and bicyclists love to drink beer because it, all the carbs. Can you drink and, and ride? I've heard I mean, of you can't drink know. and drive, right? But we were at the bar. Yeah, you, you don't think you can? Ugh. It's um, operating a bicycle while intoxicated, whatever the acronym for that is. But uh, we bike were, laws. Yeah, we were sitting at the at the bar, and these these two cyclists came in, a husband and wife, and older couple mm-hmm. they came from texas to ride this trail uh, holy cow that's dumb <laughs> so it's like this <laughs> did 60, you tell him that no it's like <laughs> this 60 year old man with calves bigger than my whole fucking head a couple of tree trunks on that guy huh? and to make him worse he had little tattoos on both of them oh, uh, but uh yeah we, we i took a little trip took a little trip, did, trip. Some, did some mewling this man. for um uh our man uh, Dustin from Drunk Lullabies. Oh, that's right. And he he gave me a gift today. Who did? Dustin. Yeah. Um, he came and picked up his beer that I mulled for him. Are there any cool caps in those? Uh, no, it was thirty two ounce can uh, crowlers. How cool would that be to have like a little bicycle or just a wheel on there with some spokes? Yeah. Um, that trailhead wouldn't sell me any beer <laughs> to take home because it's cold. It's it's cold brew. And if you can't keep it cold, it'll ruin it. Pretentious like, you know pricks. Fuck you then. Up your own butts. Up. You know what? Now I'm even more mad because you would you would have gotten a bottle cap out of it. I'm even more. No, pissed. I don't want to hear. Ah, god damn it! Now I'm pissed. But you got a present at least out of this whole thing. Yeah, um, Dustin. He came and gave me the money for the beer, which you know I knew was good for the cash because of all the sponsorships. Right. Um, and then he gave me another brand new Golden Girls T-shirt. The Golden Girls Mount. Um, <laughs> it's like they're on Mount Everest. Mount. No. The. <laughs> What's the one with all the the, the um, Mount Himalaya, all the presidents, Mount Rushmore? That is, it's uh, the yeah. Mount Rushmore. Yeah. So you know, they, I had good times. The, their faces look like rocks. I mean, I guess they do yeah, anyway. A little they're, bit. They're old ladies. A little bit. And uh, I did some pinballing. Now, where did you do that? Because that was a different place, right? Yes, I went. I went to three breweries total in one day. Two plumbers brewery. That's right. And an arcade. I played seven or twelve. Twelve. Um, Pinball machines. Was it badass? Uh, playing the pinball was badass. What was the best pinball machine game that I that I played? Yeah. Uh, the Aerosmith one was really fun, but I played an old Elvis one. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you uh, you can unlock and he would uh, there was a an Elvis statue in there. What is hip shake? And his <laughs> hips would shake back and forth, and he would go up and down. It was pretty cool. He said, "Now he said uh, an Aerosmith pinball machine. Have you ever uh, have you ever been living it up while you're going down?" Oh, love in an elevator I have. I mean, and we were in an elevator. Have you ever made love in an elevator? I tried to this weekend, but it had a glass back, and Molly said no. Now, okay, would your ass be against it, or would her front be against it? My ass. Your ass. My and she, ass. And she's 
So uh, that that would been your only opportunity. You've never done it before. No. I, I look to you. You're, you're my oh, sexual I, Svengali. Sure. I mean, it's it's surprising that I said no. Um, <laughs> one of the few places. <laughs> one of the few times I've said no in my life. Then we went to the zoo. Speaking free of animals. Zoo. For, yeah, free. That zoo was where I spent the most money all weekend. But it's free. Yeah. To get in the damn door. Yeah. What did you spend money on? Like um, plastic mold gorillas? No, but I was telling Molly about that because you remember those. You those go, are a Brookfield Zoo in, in Chicago still has one. They still have one? Yep. Then we're, that's where we're going. Those are awesome, right? Right, they are. And she had no idea what I was talking about. Now they just had those penny crunching things. That's Fuck all that. Those, that who, I'm not going to pay you 51 cents to squish a penny for me and have a fucking seal on it. I got a railroad track behind my house. Right. I could do the same fucking exactly. thing, guys. Exactly. I could put them on the wing of the plane. Yeah. Um, those those molds this reek of the 1970s oh, and, and 80s. I love they're it. They're super hot when they come out. I was there a couple years ago, uh, oddly enough, with Nurse Courtney, if you remember, mm. and I saw that, and it blew my mind. I, all those people were like five, seven years younger than me, so they had no idea what the fuck I was talking about. But I saw this thing, I was like, "This is fantastic! Oh yeah, I can't believe these are still here." And they're like, "Yeah, great. Let's get a fucking crushed penny." And that's why we broke up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I, now I want to go to Brookfield Zoo. Uh, we saw gorillas, which you know I love. I'm a, I'm a, I love me. Some you're a gorilla gr- man. I love me some you gorillas. Know, I call you a Captain Philip Restisher, but behind the scenes, you're a gorilla man. Yeah. Um, so I was very enthralled with them, watching them eat lettuce and heads of lettuce. Um, that the, enclosure in St. Louis is way better than the Brookfield Zoo one. Well, the Brookfield Zoo one used to be really cool. You used to walk across a bridge, and they were underneath. I you. think it's still like that, but it's just all concrete. It's super depressing, right? But the one in St. Louis is pretty decent, sure. right? You can yeah. like walk in and out of a cave, right, and kind of look through at them, and then you can like walk up on a ledge. Yeah, right? kind of. Okay. Um, and then I saw a baby orangutan. Mm-hmm. You you haven't lived until you saw a baby orangutan. I would love to live. His name is her name is Ginger. You know why? Because of the red hair. Yes. <laughs> And you know what? You can buy beer at the St. Louis Zoo. Can you really now? Yes. Any cool bottle caps down there? It was just a Bud Light. Nah. Um, so yeah, so we're we're worldly travelers. You and I for sure. I'm glad you got away for the weekend. I hope I hope you feel refreshed. Oh, I feel for great. This flight. Um, I always, you know what? I always feel great coming back home. Right nice. here to FCF Network. Oh yeah, giggity, giggity. I'm glad you had fun too. But something that really kind of would cap the whole thing off is getting some red hot. Fan feedback. All right, Red Hot Fan Feedback. I got it right here. We're going to start with our good friend, Didi, who is our ambassador to Australia. Uh, love us some Didi. Oh, my God. That, she's she's fantastic. You ready for this? Hit me. Um, I can't. For some reason, I can't friend her on Facebook. I think she blocked me personally. <laughs> I tried to, but I don't understand. It didn't work. You got to start one under Captain Philip Ressler. I think all everybody from Australia doesn't want to be friends with People from the United States, which I get it completely understand. I don't want to be friends with most of the people that are here anyway. Says, hello, my captains. I love how she does that. Captains, my captains. Well, it's taken me four months, but I have finally finished the complete back catalog of shows. Ow! Woo! Sorry about that. Um, that includes watching about three-fourths of the pilots as well. Wow. That's, incre- that's dedication that is- right there. I, I'm not sure that anyone else can say that. No. <laughs> I can barely say it, and I do the show. <laughs> Some are downright lousy, while others you really wonder why they didn't never took taken up. Thank you very much for the signed program a program notes you sent me. It is now framed and taken up pride of place on my wall. She has framed it and put it She's on her awesome. wall. I love this girl. I would give her a hug if I was in Australia. I'd give her a little boomerang action if you know what I mean. Whoa! I have been trying to do my research of any failed Aussie pilots. No luck so far, but I did find one from Britain that could fall into the same bucket as Hail Hitler, I'm Home for racial stereotyping. I have included the link below. Anyway... I must be going. Say hello to everyone. Molly, DSJ, First Lady Ms. Garcia, Richard, don't call him Dick, Conrad, and best wishes to DSJ's mom. Hope she's getting better. I will continue sweeping my car park parks just in case you have to make a forced landing in Air Force One down under. All the best, Dee Dee. And she sent us a link. She she. What's the name of that show, do you know? Um, That's so cool that she sent that to us. Uh, um, Spike Mulligan, The Melting Pot. The mel- I, I'm, I'm gonna, we'll check it out for sure. We yeah. have, I don't know that we've done an Australian. Oh, she said it was a British pilot, right? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. We'll definitely check that out. That'd so, be- Dee Dee, 
Hugs and kisses always. She is our ambassador to Australia. Any any chance we could Skype her in? Is that is that a thing that could be real or not? I don't. We, we could probably figure something out. That'd be fantastic. I don't know what the. I don't. I have trouble with the time zones just in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can. We can always try. I think there's seven days ahead of us. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe we'll we'll get a hold of her and see if she wants to do the deed. <laughs> do the deed. Right. Do the do. Um, speaking of which, also you you know you can get a hold of us on Facebook like she did. Sure. Our Couch Pilots fan book, fan page. You can send us an email at couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. Yep. Um, Twitter, Twitter, yeah. Couch Pilots Pod. But the best way, the way we love most, and the way you're going to get more frequent flyer points is giving that dial in number. Give it to us, everybody. It's 910 Pilots One. Call us at 910 745 6871, just like this person did right here. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's about it. Right. Now, what was that? Um, he was saying it's been a while, sure, and then he was saying like other words in the I, same tone as that. Yeah, he and I, I, I put it through the pachinko machine because I couldn't figure it out. And it says, you know, what? a lot of people say, "What's this mean? What does that do? I don't understand this." What do they do? That, they, they Google, right? Oh. Who, who, what, where, when, and why? I don't Google hardly anything before. I googled the nude bicyclist earlier. Right, but right. that's the first time I googled in months. I always turn the to the Al Pacinko machine. Sure, and you've you've entered that in, and you've come up with something. Right, so it says, you know, it's been a while. Of course, I know that part. Yeah, absolutely. I call Couch Pilots. It says you can go ahead and have sex with my girlfriend if you ever come to Folsom, California. It's been Is a while. It, oh, I didn't catch any of that. Yeah, yeah, no. So, um, no, Big Dick T. Uh, love the guy. Hadn't heard from him in a while. We it, there was a time when we thought he had been killed. By Lori Garcia. I think uh, Tyler from Mississippi even came up with some fan fiction declaring such. Right, but we know he's alive. That oh, sounded just God. like him. Um, and, you know, he's still listening to the show. They still lay in bed together. Uh, that was definitely him. I'm a, I have a former, in another life, I was a voice authenticator, oh, which yeah. is a word. Oh, yeah. And that is absolutely him. Sure. And also, we had missed Lori Garcia's birthday announcement wow. on the show. But I did contact her on Facebook the day of her birthday. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Happy belated birthday and, and with you know, your body bud butter. Bobby. Uh, Do you think R- Big Dick T, Richard Don't Call Him Dick, mm. gives her some body bud butter and well, rubs, I mean, it, rubs it on her? I think we'd have to define what body butter is first. and then, then His we semen. Do, then yes. All right. Well... Big big ups to Big Dick T and Lori Garcia. Some some Big bo- Dick T's always big ups if you know what I mean. <laughs> There's some frequent fire points coming to to both y'all, right? Yes, definitely. Oh, Dee Dee, that's so incredible. Great, I, I love I love all of everybody that sends us fan feedback. We really do enjoy it. We do love it, and it means a lot to yeah, us. I was talking to someone recently. I think it was my brother. He's unemployed now, oh. and so he's like listening to our show, and he's like, um, "What's up with all this like fan feedback?" Like he he really thought that. Um, we were making it all yeah, up. Yeah, we were making up all the fan feedback. I know people really call Just us. having people call <laughs> in different voices. Oh, mama. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. All right, strap in. Ah, <sighs> like Kid Icarus flying too close to the sun, we too dare to so- soar further than our limits to present you with failed television pilots. That's what we do. That's what Couch Pilots is. Do you remember Kid Icarus? Um, his dad like made wings out of wax and feathers. Right, and then he flew Ku Klux Klan to the sun. <laughs> he got involved with the Ku Klux Klan, and he said, "You got to be just the right amount of racist." No, but it, 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 that's mentioned. Um, that person's mentioned in um, the Hamilton. Kid Icarus is. Is he very good? Uh, the son died. Yeah, you, you know, take some. You got to break a few eggs, right? Right to make an omelet. Today we discussed the pilot episode of. King of the Building from the Year of Our Lord, 19, at 87. Great year. You said it best. Said it best. This show is built on the back of his back. Burps. Um, 
1987. I was six years old. Great time to be alive. I was 12, man. This, you know, this is one of those times where you are twice my age. Yep. Right? This is the only time we can say it. Right. Bicentennial, 1987. Oh, love the bicentennial. Uh, what, let's see, if I was 12, what grade was I in? Maybe like... 12th grade, right? <laughs> you you are the... Isn't that how it works? No. Like, you're the grade you are... No? I think that I was in 6th grade. And I wasn't banging any chicks by at that time. Yeah, right. But I was having girlfriends. All right. So, I was, I was prepping. How old were you when you first made love? When I first made love, I was uh, 16. 16. And then, uh, how old was your uh, partner? Uh, 17, I do believe. Oh, nice. Angie Older Becco. Lady. Good old McDonald's Angie Becker. I've heard that name before. Yep. <laughs> is, she now, is she now a security guard? Is that her? <laughs> I think that's what she is. <laughs> oh, She's boy. the one that used to have her panties hanging from the rearview mirror of my car. My mom hated it. <laughs> she was, right. She's like, you are a fucking tacky ass motherfucker. <laughs> you trashy piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so is she. <laughs> that's how it is, though, right? When you're in high school. Oh, yeah. There are no limits. You don't know the rules we yet. Used, it's we fun. Used, we used to have sex in her room, and her mom, and her mom was there and didn't care. Hell, yeah. Hell yeah, my man. No wonder she has a bunch of black babies. She's got a bunch of black babies, huh? Uh-huh, I think so. Are they covered in soot? <laughs> yeah, because the family business is a chimney sweep. Oh, boy. Chimney sweeps. That takes me back to 1987. 1987. <laughs> and, uh, but that's not it. You know what? I think for you and I, that's it. Chimney sweeps, sweeps take us back 1987. Right. But for the populace... They're probably like, give us a little something more. Right. Take us back to 1987, right? Bring our minds, bring our memories back into 1987 so we can look at this pilot in that mode. We need to understand it that way. So let's go back. Chim Chimery, Chim Chim Cheru. <laughs> Clive Sinclair launches the Z88 portable computer weighing under two pounds. This is your laptop, baby. This is your portable computer. Wow. Right? That's crazy. Laptop. When did you own your first laptop? Oh, geez. It, it it took me a while to get my own laptop. Wow. Um, it was later year. Whoa, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. See, we don't even have even taken off yet. And, oh, my. You know what? To be honest with you, viewers. I'm really flating the hell out of this bottle. <laughs> right. There's such a big head squirting out of it, and you owned it. <laughs> not, there's not a drip. I didn't miss anything. <laughs> that head really came out of the bottle. And then I proceeded to give it head as a, you fight fire with fire, my friend. <laughs> right. I got a funny story to go with that. But Let's hear well, it. No. No? Okay. <laughs> I uh, I got a laptop right here. Yeah. It's probably, it probably weighs two or three pounds. Sure. Uh, more than Clive Sinclair's, but this is, this is far more advanced than Clive could ever imagine. We have come so far that now a laptop basically is your telephone, your cell phone. I mean, for the most part, yeah. My 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 phone weighs maybe a fourth of a pound, mm-hmm. and it's a, it does everything this this stupid computer in front of me does, and everything plus a million that Clive Sinclair Z eighty. Oh yeah, it, it, it probably worked on DOS. Oh my god! Don't make me laugh. Floppy disks. Floppy. Were they disks. three and a half? Probably three and a half, right? Yep. The hard plastic Those ones. Big, yeah, you could wave them. Those yeah. were pretty floppy. Hoppy floppy. Hoppy. Hey. Hoppy floppy disks. Call back. Popular toys that year. This is always this is a new thing. We haven't done this before. Popular toys. Uh talking Alf. Okay. Remember Alf? Oh, I know? loved Alf. Um I he lived on Melmac and he liked to eat cats. You do a pretty good Alf impression, don't you? Mmm. Do you not? I thought you did. I don't think that was me. Okay. <laughs> That's probably some other guy I fly a plane with and do a podcast with. I don't want to think of think, I, what would he say? Well, give me a sentence. It's uh what's the guy who he lived with? Yeah, right. I don't, the guy with the glasses. I know the the next door neighbor's name were Mister and Mrs. Akmonic. Yeah, I couldn't knew. I don't know. That's going to bother me with that guy's name because he's always talking to the dad. Right. You know? Him and the dad had a real bond. Um, how much you think a talking Alf would go for? Uh, back then, yeah, twenty three ninety nine. No, not even close. Sixty nine ninety nine. Holy cow! There is a, something weird happening in the nineteen eighties. I, ha! I kill me. <laughs> there it is. He got it. <laughs> I kill me. <laughs> That's what he would say. It's probably you pull the string on this fucking thing. That's probably exactly what he says. Once you, once, once I put myself <laughs> into the an Alf doll, talking doll, it was perfect. I think. Uh, ah, I kill me. I think Alf and the Cosby Show were almost identical. You know, yeah. <laughs> Alf was always walking around with a huge for, fucking hoagie too, right? <laughs> except for the drugging women and fucking them. They were exactly- yeah. Bill never did that. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else. 
Like 70. Okay, so I remember one time I was looking at a magazine. I saw an article, like it was an old magazine. It said, hey, you want to buy this Nintendo game, this original Nintendo game? It's $70. Like, what the fuck? 70 bucks for Nintendo? Shit was expensive back then. Yeah, it was. Shit was expensive. Like, but now, but they, you know what it was is our parents paid for it. We didn't realize how expensive exactly it was. That's exactly right. Well, I remember that was probably uh, about five years before that. It uh, The Cabbage Patch Kids... Oh, yeah, I had a Cabbage Patch Kid. I had a Cabbage Patch Kid, and my mom, I know that she spent probably uh, a whole week's salary to get it at the time. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You're like six years older than me. You had a Cabbage Patch Kid? Yes. How old were you when you had a a Cabbage Patch? I was like six or seven. What? When they first came out. It was where they were impossible to get. They were tough. I I think I got my first one. I was probably four or five. Yeah, so see, I was... was yeah, I was about six. So I was mean, it really okay? I feel like you'd be in your early teens when you had a cabbage. No, patch. no okay. We, I wish, right, I wish we had it set up. We could call my mom right now. I'd, I'd love to call your mom. Um, okay, uh, 1987. Here's some boys' toys. That sounds pretty hot. Boy, sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. Uh, karate Kid action figures. The mm. the Karate Kid. Ralph yeah. Macchio, Pat. Mar- you know what's funny? Uh, Pat Morita. Ralph Macchio? I would almost say that the old guy's name would be at Ralph Macchio. You know what I mean? You would think so. It doesn't make sense. And Ralph Macchio, I think he's like, hey, I'm a I'm a I'm a sixteen year old kid. No, he's not. He's like thirty years old right. in that fucking movie, right? Uh the Mojito guy though, he was very wise. The Mojito? Uh-oh. Mojito. Pat Mojito? Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. I, I I never had any karate kid toys. I don't know. You can't pour a beer and you can't drink a beer without screwing up. Ooh, wow. <sighs> All that all that beer wants is just a little head. I'm not going to give it to it. All that I want is just a little this head. Show is built on the back of his songs. Um, that was a David Allen Co. X-rated song. Okay, continue. Here, here's Toys. A, here's a last toy: a Captain Power vehicles. Do you know what Captain Power is? Mm. That, the only reason I, I mention it is because these kids are holding like spaceships. They're holding them like guns, and they're pointing lasers at a TV. And to me, 1980s. Laser is king. All about the lasers. Lasers. We've talked is about it king. many times. Lasers, I love lasers, 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 lasers. I love lasers. 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 <laughs> I think everyone thought laser technology is the wave of the future. And by all means, it was. We do laser surgeries. And, uh, CDs were laser based, right? Yeah, but now we're in 2017. Gone. Now we just stream. Everything is streamed. MP3s are... The people who invented MP3s have stopped. They're like, no more. They stopped inventing them. They say we're done inventing these we're MP3s. We're done dealing with them. All right. Okay, last thing I have for 1987 is the search for Nessie reveals no evidence after $1.6 million investment. Nessie was the Loch Ness Monster? The Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. Nessie. People spent that much money to investigate. It's just a lake. There's no way such a, something so big could be in that lake. No, well, I think the lake, the, the lake it goes really deep. There's like tons of caverns. It, like it goes un, like like ocean level no. deep. No, no. <laughs> what is it? No, tell, but, tell me what you know about the Loch Ness. <laughs> I don't know anything, but it's just it's just another thing for people to grab a hold of. Urban well, myths. Well, okay, okay. You got you got the Yeti, right? You got the legendary Bigfoot. You got the chupacabra. Oh, I thought the Yeti. I thought you were talking about the cooler. I'm like, I, w- I wish I could get one of those coolers. They're, you know, they're, they're harder like, to find than a Cabbage Patch doll. No, they're so expensive. Like a regular cooler that you could, like a Coleman cooler yeah. at Walmart is like 40 bucks. Mm-hmm. That Yeti's like $300. There is some weird space age technology out there. That's a lady friend of mine. She's got a, a she can pour a drink and put some ice in there. And I'm not shitting you. Eight hours later, that ice is still fucking jingling around in this. What is happening? It has to be cancerous, right? We're going to get cancer from these things. Oh, yeah, definitely. We get cancer from everything. Oh, thank God. I, I, I just need a way to explain it, you know? There's, there has to be side effects to such wild technology, and it, cancer to me will explain everything. Definitely. What are you working on over there? Uh, I'm contacting my mom to see if we can call her at some point in the show and talk about how old I was when I got the cabbage patch. Are you really? Yeah. I'd love to talk to her. Fantastic. Um, by sleeping. But what do you think? I just named a bunch of legendary mythical creatures. Are any of them real? Were they ever real? I don't think they are. It's kind of like God. You know, everything's made for a reason to fulfill. To explain something? To f- explain or fulfill someone's need for something. Man man wants knowledge. That That's our, our biggest fault and the, and the biggest um, 
our, the biggest pro, pro right. and con, right, is our quest for knowledge, our, our self-realization. Real, like, um, like man coming from apes and gorillas. Right. Like, if you're just like, that's just ridiculous. But if you stand and watch them for 20 minutes. Yeah, I am an ape. You're like, I'm a fucking ape in some form or another. I really, it was freaky. Is that after your experience at the zoo? Yeah, I'm yeah. just, because then you get to, you're staying there looking at their mannerisms and their hands and how they work. And it's just... Besides crawling it's on uncanny, her knuckles right? and it's having un- big butts. Big red assholes. They don't have big red assholes. Uh, why did we choose to watch King of the Building? Uh, three simple criteria. Yep. A, it was a one and done. Yep. A pilot was made. It never went to series. Number two, we had to find it on the internet. We can't, we can't watch these unless we can find them on the internet. And number C, it had to be free we can't pay for these we cannot pay to watch this stuff that's right numbers a b and c nailed it where can you find the show to watch it for yourself that's what that's what people always ask me and i always say the same thing you can find the entire episode by subscribing to couch pilots and itunes or your favorite podcast app of choice and then click on one of our classically blue links they're right there in our show notes or use the app from daily motion and you know what to do too No, no 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 use the app from daily motion and check out all the commotion. Nice. I th- I seriously have the word nice afterwards. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, flight attendants. <laughs> you didn't uh, say it. I was going to. Off, Holy cow! DSJ been neglected the past few weeks down there on the tarmac. We will talk about him soon. There are plenty plenty of updates. To right get. right now he's busy with that new baby and, oh, yeah. and the work here. So I mean we're trying to give him his space. He's got until so many jobs. There's a bonding thing that has to happen between a we father. We can't interrupt that. And, and we're yeah. We're trying to understand. Obviously, that. we'll be a Captain Uncle, right? A oh, Captain yeah. Uncles. Yeah. Uncle Captains, whatever. Uncle Captains. I like it. Let's. Uh, if you think we should be Uncle Captains, hashtag Uncle Captains. Hashtag it. Summary of the pilot. Doorman on New York Park Avenue gets involved in the lives of his tenants. That is a very good summary. It summarizes. No fat. Good to go. I like it. 14 words. That's it. Was oh, that why you were going with this? Yeah, like count? like uh like when you're singing along on karaoke and yeah. the, the bobble. Hit. Yep. Come on along. There's a song mm-hmm. that we're singing. Mm-hmm. Come on, get, get happy. happy. A whole lot of loving mm-hmm. is what mm-hmm. we'll be bringing. Mm-hmm. Come, Come on, get, get happy. happy. I would have made I would have made sex with the mom, wouldn't uh, you? Um, it's a fact that I would. Is it interesting? <laughs> Not for me to say. <laughs> What was that woman's name? Joan Jett. <laughs> she wouldn't have sex with us. That's the problem with her. Because of our wieners? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting facts. Um, I, the most divisive part of our show, I, I, people usually say, I love your entire show. And then some people say, but the show, part of the show that I hate is interesting facts. Or they say, the part of the show that I love is you're on one side or the other. There's right. no gray area for interesting facts. Right. You're either hitting skip 15 seconds a bunch to get past this point, or you're going in half time so you can hear it super slow. Definitely. There's no middle. What do we got here? Okay. Uh, interesting facts. This was released on July. Conrad rule. Conrad rule is in effect. Everyone, please pay attention. There's a Conrad rule in effect. And the Conrad Rule states is this. I'm going to give you a bunch of facts. You're going to take them in. You're not going to comment on them. You're not going to give any qualifiers, no, no adjectives. These these are the facts. Absorb Don't, them. Mm-hmm. Simmer them within yourself. Move on with your life. Yeah, pass them through you like you would a good BM, right? Release date. The year of our Lord, 1987, July 31st. Hmm. July is coming to a close. to say, let's go out with a crappy bang. Right? Summertime. <laughs> Live is easy. Summertime. Production companies, Procter and Gamble Productions. I, I think of Procter and Gamble. I think about uh, cotton, yeah, like and cotton co- swabs. Yeah, and band aids. But they said, you know, what? we're going to throw our hat into the <laughs> into the ring here of of television pilots. Yeah, and they failed. And the Comac Company. I don't know what that is. Mm. Uh, distributors, CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. CBS, they, they're the ones who took a shot. And so much so, that it was part of the infamous CBS Summer Playhouse. We've touched a lot of those Summer Playhouses. I, I'm, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, we're going to touch a lot more. Oh, yeah. We're going to be touching it all. We ain't going to be done till we touch them all. Whoa, whoa. Hey, come on. Oh, sorry. Uh, stand, uh, stars legendary stand-up comedian Richard Lewis. He's a neurotic Jew guy. You mm-hmm. know you know uh, Richard Lewis? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, as soon as I saw him, I knew him. And uh, you know, I'll save my little point, but... Uh, 
you know, that does factor into my evaluation of this show. You got a Jew bump? He looks horrible now. Like, he looks like an old, just... Well, I think Richard Lewis is a guy who, um, as soon as he had a bottle of alcohol in his hand, that uh, was the only thing that was ever in his hand again. Nice. And so he's yeah. lived he's lived hard for a long sure. time. Um, Neurotic to the bone, no doubt about it. Sometimes I call myself a Jew. The show is built on the back of his songs. Sometimes I'm neurotic about everything. I have long hair, feathered in the middle, weird. It's and, still like that. And scene. <laughs> were, were there any animals in this? There was a dog. Whose dog was it? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that dog... Uh, Orson. Orson was the... You know all the dog. You know all the names so much so that the dog that was in it for thirty five seconds, you knew his name. I have, I have actually have comments about the dog later on. Was it Beethoven? Was it, it the same si- dog? No, it was a Siberian Husky. No, it was a, a, a Saint Bernard. Saint Bernard. Uh, this this <coughs> dog came courtesy of Studio Animal Services. Fact. That's fact. I- there, there was, there are multiple businesses out there that provide animals to studios, and that's where that dog came from. Nice. How do you like that? Don't comment on it. Interesting facts over. Nice. Comment on it. Whew. That was, that was some interesting facts. Interesting facts. We've been very animal-centric today. Yeah. And in a second here, as far as right now, uh, Twitter response. Hit it. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. I really hope Jason got some Twitter responses. <laughs> uh, if wishes and butts were... Granola, granola, and raisins and nuts. We'd all have a bowl full of granola. You wished it into existence. I do have Twitter yes. responses. Boom. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we did a little program called 111 Gramercy Park. Mm-hmm. Right? And Bill D'Elia, the, the director, responded to us. He said, did you actually watch it? And I said, yes. And then he said nothing. For a long time. Until the day after we recorded. Then he said something. He said... Uh, um, I said, we're excited to watch it, as usual, you know, and hey, you have anything you want to contribute? Did you actually watch it? I said, yes, we watch every pilot we discuss. You've directed and produced some pretty iconic pieces of TV. How does 111 Gramercy Park rank? And this is the new part. He said, if you watched it and you know my work, you know where it ranks. Does that sound pretentious? It sounds pretentious and kind of like, it sucks, but I'm not going to tell you it sucks. Right. I can't say it sucks because I would say I suck. So I said, I hear you. Thanks for getting back with us. I hear you, bro. Us. Thanks for getting back with us and continued success to you, sir. Nice. And I just want to throw a little bit more of a shout out. Not only is uh, he the director of this, but he's also the, I think, the father of uh, Chris D'Elia, who is a, a comedian. comedian. And, but he also did, um, he's, he's directed such television shows as Law and Order, Northern Exposure. I Do- liked Northern Exposure. It's I remember you saying that. It really is a good show. Uh, Doogie Hauser, MD, Beverly Hills, 90210, Allie McBeal, The West Wing, and How to Get Away with Murder. And he, he, guess what? He also produced the Wonder Woman pilot that we did. Oh, wow. So there you go. Amazing. So thanks for getting back with us. I appreciate it. Um, but as it as it relates to this pilot, more Twitter responses. Oh, yes. We're on fire. The uh, legendary stand-up comedian Bobby Slayton, who played Eddie on the show and has appeared in Wayne's World 2, Dr. Katz, professional therapist, Home Improvement, Family Guy, and Dream Girls, also known as the Pitbull of Comedy. Mm-hmm. Something perked up. What? What is there? Do you have feelings about Bobby Slayton? Do you well, know? Him? I just I know of Bobby Slayton. I've right. seen him in a lot of different stuff, and I I believe I've heard him on podcasts of some time. Uh, Marin, I think definitely the, years ago. Right. I'm talking probably three, four years ago, sure. maybe even longer than that. Did a podcast with him. Um, so the Pitbull of Comedy. As always, I say we're excited to watch your show. Wondering if you have any fun or inside information you want to contribute. Thank you and take care. He says, King of the Building was my first pilot directed by the legendary James Comack. Uh, since my acting skills were so bad, the lead went to Richard Lewis. So he was up for the lead. Oh, wow. Didn't get it, but they said, you know what? We got a part for you. Sure, that's interesting. And you're allowed to say such. I know. Um, and I said, okay, well, you're both great comics. Uh, and that I can see you, 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 you play a similar type acting sure. roles. I, I can see you guys both going out for the same type of roles. Um, I take it while not the lead, you'd have been a series regular. And he responded, yes. I would have been a series regular if CBS picked up the show. Oh, well, it was the late 80s and first of many crushing disappointments. <laughs> and I said, it seems like you've done pretty well for yourself. Thank you so much for getting back with us. Take care. Awesome. Thank you so much. It, was, it's, it feels good to get that kind of 
um, I like the di- dialogue, a back and forth. Absolutely, sure. that's what I like. When we can go back and forth, I remember one time we went back and forth with some lady in like in real time for like four or five texts. It was really, it was for um, that one where the guy was the uh, he did the newspaper and the wife was a like a lawyer or something. Uh, American Nuclear, yeah. And one of the ladies in that went back and forth. It feels good, sure. Where you can in real time communicate with someone who had something to do with the show, such awesome. as the case with Bobby Slate and the Pitbull of Comedy. Thank Bobby, you so much. hey Bobby, thank you, Bobby. Hey, thank you, Low Blow. In a world where we hate everything except for the things <laughs> we love, there's the Low Blow Podcast. So join us every week as me, Adam Z, me, Dave Rowan, and Chris and Naomi. She might be naked. I'm naked. Fill your ear holes with unbiased reviews of movies, TV shows, comic books, anything Florida does, and basically the rest of the internet, right here in the FCF Network. So please, check out all your favorite downloading podcasting apps for us, the Low Blow Podcast, appropriately inappropriate. Oh, Love it. <laughs> that, that is such a well-produced, well-written... So much better than the last one. It inspires me to do a new one. Because of Garcia. I think that's what eh, it is. Maybe. I think they, they they use her as a sexual pawn to get listeners. Well, if that's the case, then they're reading my mind exactly. I have a vision of what she looks like in my head, and it's a sexual pawn. Oh, I thought you said sexual pose. That too. A pawn in a pose. Let's great, break down this pilot. Great show. Low Blow is a great show right here on the FCF Network. We love those guys. Um, Happy belated birthday, Dave Rowan. And happy king of the building, all of our frequent flyers. Uh, pleasant, I would almost say like a polka style music. A lot of horns, kind of tuba. I, I got yeah. the tuba written down. Uh, you know, the streets of New York. What all is going on in the streets of New York? Panning the city. Dogs. Just, a lot of dog walking going on. That's what they do in New York, right? Mm-hmm. I, I personally never been. I can only assume that I there won't are dogs. I go to New York. I have a really good friend that lives in New York, and she said a hundred times, "You guys should come out." I was like, "No, I, I will. I will self destruct within the first twenty minutes." Too of much dog walking. Too much of everything. Honestly, that was the major drawback of going to Chicago this weekend is the traffic. I know you and I went last year to Chicago mm-hmm. to see a, a live podcast, oddly enough, and the traffic was, I think it took us 70 <coughs> minutes to go 10 miles. <coughs> that is infuriating mm-hmm. to me. Well, we, we uh, um, in St. Louis, getting there on like 5.30 on a Friday, it was horrible. That was and pretty I was, bad. I was losing my mind. Sunday on the way to the zoo because we went when they opened at eight o'clock. Yeah, so we were on the highway at seven thirty. <laughs> we're the only people on the highway. Nice. It's great. High five that shit. <laughs> Richard Lewis is, plays the doorman. He's working the night shift. Joey. Hey Joey, open the door for me, would you? <clears throat> no, if you don't mind me going back just a second to crank it back. The title on the title sequence. I thought it was really neat that they gave the actor's name and the character they played. People like me oh, yeah. that okay. watch pilots, this is, was very important. But it was neat that, you know, a lot of times they just flash the actor's name up. Is that how you got the dog's name? No. No, <laughs> no. but I rewound for that, by the way. Um, that, that is cool. because Yeah, you're right. Usually it's at the end. It just helps you put two and two together. I recently watched Master of None Season 2. I think you said you'd watch it, and yes. you're like, eh. Hmm. I, I kind of agree with you. I, I enjoyed it, but to me... Stop with a love story, all right? Let's have fun in New York. Let's fuck around. Let's be funny and have fun. My biggest problem, because that Italian girl was smoking fucking hot. She was, she was a beautiful girl. But I don't wear my glasses when I watch TV. I can't read your fucking cell phone text messages or read, and like, three episodes had... Um, a bunch of Italian subtitles? Yeah, and I just... Yeah. You lose me. That, that, that's I'm not sorry. the way I, I... That's not the reason I disliked it. I disliked it because it's like... All right, your you're love, love again. You're love, Lauren, great. Yeah, they can do way better than that. I, I, I made my brother because we watched. My brother and I watched the whole thing at the at the, at the end of the last one. I said, let's watch the first episode of the first season. It was all fun. It was a fun right. episode. Sure, he walked around New York with a bunch of kids. You know, right? Well, when he, you know, and it was kind of fun when uh, his buddy came over to see him and they were eating a bunch of stuff. That was a good time. Yeah, you know, and they went oh, to the wedding. God. They went to the wedding. That was good. <laughs> that was that was the best episode. I think. I <laughs> loved it. Joey the Doorman. Uh, Joey Dorman. Um, it's 3 a.m. You get a knock on the door. I must be lonely. <laughs> nice. Can I have a high five for that fucker? <laughs> Thank you. Love that Matchbox 20. <laughs> um, it's Hector, actually. Not not Rob Thomas at all. It's Hector coming in to... He's not a licensed plumber, but he's there to fix a problem the building's having in the basement. Right. They're having a problem with the boiler. So he goes down there, and then you have uh, old lady... Uh, Bi- this is Billy Bird. Now this is, a, this is a, a famous character actress. Is that rapping grandma? Was that was she? No, rapping? no, no. Oh, no. okay. I, 
I, I put rap and grandma question mark. Seriously, the, I think the only other place I can really remember her being is the, she's a part the female obviously of the elderly couple in Home Alone that Catherine O'Hara is trying to bargain with to okay. get their ticket okay. to go home to Chicago to get her boy. I've seen her in tons of stuff. Absolutely, she's dead. R.I.P. Oh, she comes down the stairs uh, from her apartment. She lives in the building, uh, and she says, "She says, hey Joey, I got you some milk and cookies." No. She said, oh, Elliot. Elliot. That's right, because she thinks it's her son. And you know me, the name guy, it threw me off. I'm like, wait a minute. He just said his name was Joey. I didn't know what was going on. (laughs) You went to a complete tailspin. Right. I'm like, oh, I'm losing my mind. I stayed sober for this. It's a change of pace. Right. Um, so, but uh, she thinks it's her son. She's kind of senile. She's a, she's a real old lady. Thinks it's her son. And and at a, at a certain point, he kind of goes along with right. it. Right. You he, know? he tries to remind her of the true facts, but then realizes, hey, this will go a lot smoother if I just go with the flow. Hector then emerges Boom. from the basement. Yeah. Smoke, ash, dust, dirt fills the air. Fire alarm goes off. Everybody goes into a panic. Yep. All the residents are down in the, the lobby and, you know, Joey's like, no, there's no fire. And he's trying to calm everybody down. They're doing not- crowd control. Crowd control, not crowd work. No. <laughs> That's old comedian <laughs> reference. Um, so finally, he can't get everybody to calm down. So finally, he's like, okay, I tell you what. If you want, we can sit around and I'll talk about some of the stuff that goes on around here. You know, a few uh, few episodes ago, we did 111 Gramercy mm-hmm. Park. This is, That was almost the dramatic version. Sure. This is the comical version of the same kind of thing. Exactly. Because the, in the Gramercy door- Park, yeah, the doorman knows all. They see all. They know mm-hmm. your secrets. They know what you're up to. They know when you come, when you go. And so does Joey. And he, in a comic way, kind of says, I'll spill your secrets, right? right? But that gets them all upstairs in a hurry. Exactly. And then uh, there's one, uh, the kid left, it was Brian. He's down there. And, and Joey's like, what's wrong, buddy? You know, go upstairs. He's like, my parents are away. He's like, well, you got your babysitter. He's like, I'm scared. I'm scared. So then they play some. He's like, all right, we'll play a couple hands of, of poker, I'm assuming. And it fades out there, but, oh, what a shitty babysitter, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let the boy just wander around a building. Exactly. And then the next scene uh, that starts out. Was that the same boy? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Orson, the the uh, dog, comes off the elevator. St. Bernard, right? St. Bernard gives a treat. And basically, Joey's going to have to go walk him. And he sees Brian. This kid is eight. No one's watching him. No one's watching him. He's leaving in downtown New York. And Joey says, hey, why don't you take the dog for a walk around the block a couple times? I'm like, who who is going to do that? You, you live, you grow up being a New Yorker. You think the 70s, the 80s are the best. Fuck Mayor Giuliani for cleaning up Times Square. You know what? I think he made it a fairly livable city. Right, but but back th- then, these kid, that kid is getting anally raped oh. for the next... Day and a half. You, you know? know it exactly. I mean, and when we when we saw Mason Reese, which we're going to open the the book for a second. I wish we wouldn't. But he was going through New York, all over, everywhere, and just doing whatever he wanted. And he was six. He, he he met a pervert in the park that he had wanted to sleep over with. Right. Let's close so, the book on know, him. Okay, okay, we'll close the book. But you know, <laughs> don't send a little kid to walk a huge dog, a huge dog, yeah. in New York City by himself, and you know. He, and he does, and, he's, and he gets Joey to pay him a few extra bucks to do it, too. He says, sure. all right, kid, get out of here. And then Mr. Jameson arrives. Ugh. Very prim, proper, British. And apparently, is he the building manager? Is yeah, that what he does? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, he's, okay. he's, the, he's the building manager, for sure. And and he's very, I, I, to be honest with you, um, nope. I wasn't happy with how this character was portrayed. Why is that? I, I don't like the British aspect of it. Uh, I can understand the hoity-toitiness and the... But it just the British kind of feel, and he, he to me, I'll just wait. I'll, I'll save it for turbulence. Okay, but there will be fair. some turbulence with that's Mr. Fair. Jameson. Mrs. Gladstone has flooded her bathtub, and then they send the black maintenance guy slash janitor. What's his name? Lonnie. Lonnie. Okay, that's funny. The hotel, no, it's Leon. I'm sorry, Leon. I was gonna say the hotel that I work at's got a Lonnie. That no, was it's, it's guy. Leon. Uh, yeah, so he's going to go up and uh, and work on the Miss, Mrs. Gladstone's overflow. And that's tub. Billy Bird. That's the old lady from before. Mm-hmm. And then Hector, he says, I'm holding everything together in the basement where I was doing the plumbing work. I'm, ho- I'm holding it all together with a garden hose. And uh, they, they need to get rid of Mr. Jameson. So he can work on... Because he, Joey has got Hector down there without Mr. Jameson knowing what's going on. Because he's not licensed, but they want to do it on the cheap. They want to get done. Hector's, Hector's apparently the best guy that can do it. Unlicensed, and that wouldn't fly with Mr. Jameson. Joey then asks to take the morning off uh, to Mr. Jameson because he's going to be on the cover of a magazine about who runs the building. And he does this to manipulate Mr. Jameson. So he's like, he's like no, I think I should do it. I'm right. going to go. To get him out of that. But Mr. Jameson catches him. He says, no, I know what you're doing. 
I'm, I'm calling you out on trying to trick me. And I'm also calling a social worker right now to get Mrs. Gladstone the hell out of this place because, now, for one, you know she she's old and she ha- causes a lot of problems within her apartment. I understand that. Yeah. But what it really truly boils down to, spoiler alert, rent, rent control. control. High five it. <laughs> That's right. People want the most bang for their. And we buck. don't understand. Like people that live, I don't understand in, it in Mississippi or. Australia Illinois or Australia don't understand or what Folsom rent- County. I hear a train coming. It's, it's all the rent, rent control. <laughs> no, but basically in places like that, if you live there for a long period of time, you're paying a very small amount. You are locked in. Yeah, you're locked in, and it's not going up. That's right. And we find out later what she pays, and it is astonishing. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Mrs. Gladstone's, uh, uh, they're back. Okay, so now I, I do want to say one quick hmm, thing about ahead. this scene. The crowd laughs. When Mr. Jameson says he wants to kick Mrs. Gladstone out, but the crowd gasps when they learn that Joey could be fired from his job. Right. Like, what's more important here? Where are the priorities of this, yeah. this canned this laughter la- audience? Where this old lady's going to live? <laughs> or what? So uh, Joey's got to figure out an idea. So him and Eddie and Joey and Leon and Hector are all up in Mrs. Gladstone's apartment. And he's trying to get Mrs. Gladstone out of the apartment. He's like... Mr. Jameson is, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, no, no. Joey is sitting down with Mrs. Gladstone. Oh, they're trying to figure it out, right? He's right. almost she, trying to well, tell her. Yeah, he's like, you're, you're going to go on vacation. She's like, well, I don't need to go on vacation. Yeah. Um, and then Mr. Jameson comes up, sees Joey there after he told him not to go up there. He said, you, before he said, you're on your last straw. Right. He goes up there, he says, now, boom, you're out of a job, sir. You're fired. Oh, you're fired. Next scene, Eddie is practicing being the doorman. Eddie, again, is Bobby Slayton. The guy who got a hold of us, thankfully. And um, and Joey's down there. He's like, what are you doing? I've got till 5 p.m. You know, at the right. end of my shift, that's yeah. when that's the end of my job. And he's kind of doing, imitating, like, who how he's going to talk to everybody and, like, getting those tips. Because Eddie is, like... I'm he's pre- tip-centric. Yeah. He's like, I'm prepared to take over the leading role of, like, the, of this pilot. He's like, I just want the tip. Just give me the tip. Ooh, I love the tip. Down there, Leon, Hector, and Eddie, they're, they're and Joey, they're all coming up with a scheme to keep Joey's job and save Mrs. Gladstone's apartment. Right, so Joey comes up with that they're going to booby trap her apartment so the social worker will go against Mr. Jameson. Yeah, she'll she'll be like, Mr. Jameson, you're not taking care of the building? Mm -hmm. Look at all these things that are broken. You're not taking care of this lady's apartment, and it's... uh, You're the one who's in trouble. Old old people abuse. This person's not at fault at all. You're the one who should Mm -hmm. be keeping up on it. Mrs. Riley arrives uh, to interview Mrs. Gladstone. Big hair on Mrs. Riley. Big hair. Big, beautiful, bushy 80s 80s hair. hair. You know, you know what? what? I bet you the drapes and the curtains matched. And you're going to want to high-five that shit. <laughs> then the trouble starts. First the electricity, then the refrigerator door falls off, and then the AC blows dust and soot all over the place. Shelves fall down. Yeah. And Everything's all broken. That's right. And, and they say, this can't happen. You know, we're at 731 Park Avenue. Darling, right? I love you, but give me Park Avenue. Huh. Isn't that what Taco used to sing about? No, that was from Green Acres. It was, uh, what was her name from Green Acres? Zsa Zsa Gabor. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, (laughs) um, this is also where you find out that she pays only $62 a month for Red Eye. Nice. High five it. (laughs) $62. I would love to pay $62 for anything. Oh, my, for anything. (laughs) Um, They then see there's a, a dead bird in the toilet. And Joey tells uh, Mrs. Gladstone what he would do for her, and there's a weird like montage of Joey talking to about Mrs. Lo- Re- it's about about all the things he loves, and a lot of it has. I mean, he's talking about Mrs. Gladstone, but he's using references about everything under the sun that he loves and why he loves it and what he would do for it. This is like plan- part B of the plan. The first yeah. part is look at all this shit going wrong, and if it wasn't for me loving her. And that's part B, is talking mm-hmm. it up. He's kind of trying to do... He's like, It's a humble brag. It's a classic humble brag, nice. right? R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, he's talking their ears off about how he loves the job and the people there. And then Mrs. Riley decides, you know what? Mrs. Gladstone will stay here. Time out. What's that? Time, don't, time don't, in. Don't give... Don't just go past this. Orson comes out for his second scene as he walks into the lobby with a piece of paper in his mouth. The dog. And then just walks off screen. Did someone grab the paper? I think so, but it was just—I didn't catch that. Unnecessary. At all. But I didn't catch it at all. I Orson, that. great job. Woo. 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 
<laughs> Dog pound. Dog pound, baby. Yes, Mrs. Riley is going to file a complaint on Mr. Jameson, as you said, and um, and you know, Mrs. Gladstone gets to stay there as long as Joey is stays employed and gets to help her. Killed two birds with one stone, right there. Joey saved his it. job and saved Mrs. Gladstone. Hell yeah! And then you know what? Joey's like, I don't know if I want to stay now. And then James is like, I'll give you a raise. And he's like, All right, boom! He wins on all fronts. And he's 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 living high on the hog right now. He's he's rolling sixes That's every right. time. And he's like, He's like, I gotta keep this streak going. Right, Mrs. Riley. Uh, <laughs> you know, thanks for helping out. You, 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 you want big go, beautiful hair? You have beautiful hair. You want you want you want to go out? I got I got keys to the the roof. If you want to go, fuck. And here, and here she's saying, apparently she's assuming that Joey has wild dreams, okay? Right. Because she says, not in your wildest dreams when I ever go out with you. Oh, some of the dreams I've had lately. Woo! <laughs> Care to elaborate? Nope. Blast from the basement. Hector emerges with dust again. The resident's upset. Joey attempts to calm him down, and they fade out. The end. Oh, turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. Cheers. You know, cheers to great. you. That was great. Frazier. Who's the boss? These shows went for years. This show didn't go anywhere. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. The facts, facts of, of life. life. Why didn't the king of the building work? I mean, clearly, Joey was the king of the building. Sure. Um, Richard Lewis. Uh, I think pretty much his whole career, he's been the neurotic Jewish comedian, right? I don't think he's ever. I, that, that's his. From, that's his jam from day one. Do you remember that show, um, early '90s, called Anything But Love? Yeah. Oh yeah. Him and Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. right? But here's my thing: is is like in this one, he's not neurotic at all. And I think if you know Richard Lewis, play to your strengths. Play to your strength. To me, I want to see. I would have liked to see the character be neurotic, and you know, and instead of like the sensitive. I want him to be in a rock. I want him to, to to have not follies, but I want him to be worried about everything. I want to, I want to see the Richard Lewis character, right, as opposed to him playing something completely different than he is. So you think that he was playing against type, and that hurt the show? I do believe so. Yes, because at this point, Richard Lewis is well established as a comedian. Sure. He's probably thirty to thirty five years old. He's been in the circuit probably 10, 15 years. So he's been years. doing he's been doing comedy at the Creek, you know. At the creek, no, the creek in the cave. It's a, a famous. The creek in the cave. I don't know it's that. A famous nightclub in New York. Didn't know that. The, the creek fuck is wrong with you. That apparently, exactly that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well, he put his time in at the creek in the cave, apparently, <laughs> and ho- maybe down by the brook and the babble too. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, um, what would you do to improve this? Um, have him play more towards type. Play more towards type, and being the doorman gives you endless amount. I mean, you have. Endless amounts of storyline. That's right. So they have that going for the them. The building is People as like, big oh. and populated as you need it to right. be. Right. They're like, oh, it's just a show about a doorman. Endless stuff. It's kind of yeah. like a you know, kind of like a guy being a UPS guy. He's always running into other people. You know. Absolutely. If it had survived, you know, I I think there, yeah, every door is a new possibility. It's a new story. And it's being a new neurotic resident. would just, I mean, it would just heightened all that. It would it would give you the opportunity for more jokes. Yeah. More, you could even go. Oddbally jokes because of that, you know, sure. that kind of character. So to crank up the suspense from a, a, a three, a resting three, where it is now to like an eight and a half. Right. right? Sure. That could be fun. Other people, other people thought it could be fun too. Let's find out what they said. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. I'm lying. No one else thinks it's fun. There's no score on IMDb. There are no critic reviews. I, no there's no score reviews. on IMDb. There's nothing. Six point five. You nailed it. Good job. <laughs> no one's talking about this. This is one of those pilots that either recently became available to see, or no one ever saw to begin with. But it did play on the CBS Summer Summer Playhouse in the late '80s. You would think that there'd be something about it. That Summer Playhouse is a treasure trove of pilots. It is. It really is. It's a, a cornucopia of a of, of beautiful. Floral arrangement of, of pilots that we can pick from as as needed. On the turbulence part, mm-hmm. I forgot to talk about Mr. Jameson. Remember how I said, you know, I, oh, yeah. I, I just, he could have been less snobby and British. I mean, he could still be gruff and like a smart ass, but not so British and. It's too much of a stereotype. Who, huh? Hoity toity. 
Yes. Yeah. You know. So you're I I I I read that from you as too much of a stereotype. It's like they it almost, when you stereotype someone to that point, it almost takes you out of reality. And what you want is to base it in reality. You know, you want to believe what you're seeing and enjoy it instead of having to deal with like, oh, you know, this is a, a, a super flaming homosexual or right. a super prim and proper British guy. But yeah, that that can see that taken out of it too. Can we take a pause real quick? Yeah, what, what we got? We're going to call my mom about this Cabbage Patch Kid. Oh my God, fantastic. I mean, do you have time? Absolutely. I got all the time in the world for your mom. Ooh. I, I got a bad... Ooh. She knows what she's getting into? No, she has no idea. Well, <laughs> and she doesn't need to know. Right. I'll let you do the steering. All I need to know, do you want to stay together? Can you hear it? All I need to know. Hello. Hey, how are you? I am fine. Um, you're on Couch Pilots right now. Oh, great. One of my... <laughs> <laughs> we sent... It's me and Jason. We can sense your sarcasm. Hi, Jason. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Girlfriend's cute. <laughs> she, Whoa. I, I don't think she'd like being called my girlfriend. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. She's, she hasn't listened to the show. Okay. That's fair. Um, thank you. You look. You look great. You look almost unrecognizable. You look so beautiful the other day. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I really, try really hard every you, morning. You really doll yourself up when you go to Walmart. <laughs> yeah, I do. She, she wants to look better than everybody, she, so she just wears pajamas. For, for a half second, I di- I didn't recognize her for a half second. She, I mean, she really did. She really looked dressed up and like ready to present herself. I think at she's had her boobs done recently. I think. Uh, oh jeez. Okay, so what 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 do you want? Um. Well, we were we were dis- we were discussing Cabbage Patch Kids. Now, how old okay. wa- how old was I when you spent a month of salary on a Cabbage Patch Kid for me when we lived in Hoffman Estates? About about what about about what age was I? Uh you were probably six, maybe six. Seven? I told you I was six or seven. I remember Cabbage Patch. I, like, I think I got one when I was four and five. This was like 1985-ish. So I thought Blake would have been like <laughs> 13. Ten, 10 to 13 years old when he had one. I was like, that doesn't seem right at all. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was now, did, yeah, second did, and third grade there. Now, you got you got it on the black market from some um, Is that right? Yugoslavian people that lived across <laughs> the street from or across the complex. Now, was that about a month's salary for you for to give me that plastic-headed doll? Pretty much. In those sac- days, yes, it was. It was uh, a lot of money. The sacrifices you made to make me happy to carry around a plastic head. Now, uh, now, Blake's mom, you, you live through the 80s, and, and you're living right now. Everything is so cheap right now. Can you agree with that? No. Really? You don't think so? I, I think certain things are more expensive now, but toys and crap for your house... Is so cheap. Uh, Cabbage Patch Kids was probably like 60, 70 bucks for a doll in the in the 80s, right? Mom, Mom do you remember how much oh, you paid for mine? I, I do not. Was it? But I know you know, those people did get get it get it for me. Those Yugoslavian yeah. people that used to they really did. Yugo, they were they were not Yugoslavian. Were they Jews? <laughs> what? Were they Jews? No. Oh, <laughs> that sounded racist. You're like, no, I would never talk to a Jew. The past 15 seconds sounded racist I, to me. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't remember exactly. You can't or but, won't. Um, they, they, were, they were foreign, yes. Um, ooh. Um, okay, one more question. What was the name of the, the Cabbage Patch Kid guy? He came out with the line of bears, and we stood in line to get the autographed bear. What was the name of those bears? Do you remember? What I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about the, at all. The now. guy that um, the guy that invented. Uh, why don't you bing this? The, the 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 guy that invented the Cabbage Patch Kids. He then came out with a line of like honey bears or sorry bears. They were stuffed bears, and we stood in the mall. Bears. Uh, what? They were yeah. They were they were a line of bears, and and, and we, they had names and stuff, and and they had the it, birth certificates. Yeah, um, and they were they that that was like sixty seventy bucks too. That is expensive. Um, Oh, 80s. I can't remember his name. Um, and we stood in line to get his autograph on the bear, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, where is that bear today? Schaumburg Mall. I left it. I left it with Dave because he paid for it. Oh. That my engagement ring. You know what? The Woodfield Mall. 
What bar was yes, it? Yes, yes. So you left it with a with a former boyfriend because he paid for it. <laughs> the only thing he ever paid for in your relationship, you left with him. <laughs> that is that in my little bitty engagement ring. Little itty bitty. <laughs> Well, Mom, uh, we, we've got a jam-packed show, but I wanted to uh, touch base with you because you are the woman of facts when it comes to my childhood. Uh, well, oh. I w- w- so. Hey, one uh, more. I will have to Google it, I guess. Hey, one more. Um, mm-hmm. You remember Angie Vecco, right? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. She was, a ni- she was a nice woman, wasn't she? She was a whore. <laughs> Do you remember what I had? I had her underwear on my rearview mirror in my car. No, I don't remember that. Oh, shit. Yeah, you, I can't believe you don't remember. Okay, Mama, well, it was great talking to you. Thank you very much, and we love you. We love you. Love you, love you guys too. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> I love her. This is the best episode we've ever done. <laughs> I think so. Hold on a second. Don't push those buttons yet. <laughs> oh, oh, go ahead and push boy. those buttons. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11-11 and the temperature is 65 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. <laughs> Boy, there's, there's nothing worse than cold McDonald's fries. Nothing. Like when they're hot, they're the best fries you can buy. They're on the, they're on the, they, they cover the complete spectrum of deliciousness, right? Like it's the worst shit in the world. If it's even like a, just lukewarm, right? But if it's if it's piping hot and, and salty and glistening, ah, 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 the greatest thing you've ever had, right? Nice. Oh man, your mom is a delight. Oh, I love her. So much information. <laughs> I hope. Uh, I hope she they, was a whore. I hope they create the singularity before she passes away. Um, one to seven is the scale here, folks. This is what we're doing. This is landing. We've landed the plane, and we cannot exit the plane until we deliver a score that is relevant to this, this pilot. And it's based on the Wings television program from the 19 ad 90s, uh, 1 to 7, the worst you can get, Roy Biggins. No pilot out there wants that. Has it been given before? Oh, yeah, yeah, betcha. Yeah. Number 7, the best a man can get, like so much Gillette Shaver, Brian, Brian Hackett. Hackett. Love Brian Hackett, Love right? Brian Hackett. Captain Philip Rester, I turn to you. How do you rate King of the Hill? King, King of, of the, the Building. building. King, I've been drinking. King of the Hill, seven. No. That is a great show. Um, uh, Richard Lewis, love him. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give this. Oh, my God. She's calling back. Mom's calling back? <laughs> so. Okay. We, we, can't, we can't take this call right now. We, 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 <laughs> we've got people lined up to get in the plane. Um, um, I'm going to give it a four. Okay. I liked the show. I really would have liked to have seen him more of a, a neurotic Jewish sure. yeah. doorman. Uh, I don't think there's such thing as a Jewish doorman, but if there was, I would definitely, you know. So I'm giving it a four. I, I didn't hate it. It had some potential. Yep. And, uh, yeah. I, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to say this is a five. Okay. Uh, 111 Gramercy Park, I didn't care for it. No, I, it was I awful. One of the reasons I didn't care for it is because it wasn't funny. This is kind of funny. Sure. This allowed elements of comedy. The jokes weren't ridiculously cheesy. They were, they were you know, they weren't they were, so. They were 1980s sitcom goofy. Right, but they weren't just gaudy funny. You, you don't have a lot of shows like this. A lot of shows tread similar territory, not only because fans love it, but because they know how to tread that territory. This is something you don't see a lot. So I like to give points for people kind of trekking out into directions they normally wouldn't see. Right. Such is the case with King of the Building. My well, lord, will she just shut up? You got a piece of foam right there. Why don't you put that goddamn phone Xavier on that Xavier Roberts. Xavier Roberts was the guy who invented Cabbage Patch Kids and then had the line of uh, teddy bears. Great. <laughs> God damn And it. she thought Angie Fetko was a hoe. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, Mom. This is a five. Four and a five. It, it, it was funny. You've got a lot of great people involved in this show. It could. It definitely could have been better. It wasn't, you know, smack my knee funny. It was. There was some giggles in there. There's a lot of opportunity for growth. But I give it a five. This sure. is a decent watch. 22 minutes. Spend it. Have fun with it, right? Exactly. And with that, we close the book on King of the Building, never to be mentioned again. Ever. But we're not done. Join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of Steel Justice. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. David Nash has lost his son and his will to live, but the boy appears in his dreams as well as his Robosaurus toy. 
A mythical figure will help Nash to turn the Robosaurus into a real creature in order to avenge his son's death. You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots on iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, and, and you, you know, know what, what to, to do, do tube. tube. Everyone's saying that to me. I know. I can't walk down the street. My wife said during a sex day night. She did? Uh-huh. I got She's like, learn how to do that. Learn go how to YouTube, to- and, and you, so you know what to do, too. Learn how to do to me, will you? <laughs> we mentioned it before couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com uh go there i would take it a step further and say go to couchpilotspodcast.com right right that's one stop shop for yeah. everything you need. i created the phrase one stop shop a few weeks ago no one else had ever said that before me a few weeks right. ago i created that phrase and now it's taking this the world by storm just like you know what to do to i like a like a hit making machine oh yeah almost you you're know? like the the guy that used to write songs for the backstreet boys i'm like a xavier or whatever the fuck you xavier said the guy who made cabbage patch kids i'm that guy <laughs> Anyway, go there. It's got all of our social media outlets. The only thing it doesn't have is YouTube, and no one gives a shit about YouTube except the ones who know what to do to. Um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or call us, 910-PILOTS-1. Love to get phone calls. We got a message today from Big Dick T. That was ridiculous. We got one next week. I don't know what it is. It sounded like a goddamn robot talking to us again. That'll be fantastic. I can't wait for that. Um, SCFnetwork.com, right? Yes, a great mi- shows. A myriad of great shows, all free, all um all for your ear holes, right? Yeah, Did Adam every, Z say that? For your ear holes? Every day of the week you can get a different show and you're, they're free. That's it. That's that's the thing for me. If you're going to make me pay, no I'm way. Out, no, no way. way. That's right. Nice. I don't even want to talk in rhymes anymore. <laughs> Captain uh, Wrestle Shirt. Okay, Jay-Z. <laughs> Captain Jay-Z. <laughs> Anything else you want to say to our frequent flyers? No, I don't like to take a lot of people's time. They've already <laughs> spent an hour and 15 minutes with us. But yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to say thank you very much to Didi. I want to say thank you very much to Big Dick T. I want to say thank you very much to my mom. That was, that was incredible. <laughs> to be honest with you, who else's mom? Who other 42-year-old guy is going to be able to call his mom and talk about Cabbage Patch Kids, uh, Xavier Roberts, and whores, girlfriends he's had? No, your mom is She's top of the notch. I love her to death. The unholy trinity of, of conversation. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just uh, listen to, I mean, just contact us. Send us a voicemail. Anything. You want those freaking flyer points. Please tell people about the show. Right. That's all I got. That's all I'm done. I'm done. That's all you got to say? I'm, I'm sticking Nothing che- more. I'm shoving a cheeseburger in my face. I'm done. All right. And with that, this pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you next time. We love you, Xavier Roberts. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.